What's up guys, welcome back to another video, I hope you're all doing well today. Today we are on a track that I don't recall ever seeing a video on. Now, uh, some of you, I wouldn't say long term video, uh, long term viewers sorry, it wasn't that long ago. Um, but a few months back I said I wanted to do a video on every Supercross track that's ever existed in MX Bikes and just kind of compile it all together like a lap of each. Now, that is something that's on the back burner, so <laughs> uh, it's taken a hell of a long time. You know, I think I've got about 50 tracks deep out of maybe 150 or so. I'll get around to it again at some point. But this is one of them hidden gems that I've come across in my, in my searches. And this is 2020... <clears throat> Let's just make sure I get the track right. 2020 St. Louis, so round two of the 2020 Supercross season. And this is made by Rubes. Now, there are two versions of this track. One is the Forest version that I'm on right now. And then there is another one, which is the Race Edition, which is the one that's got like all of the stadium and uh, models like Bales and Crowd and all that good stuff. Um, but I think for the sake of this video, I wanted to do the Forest version purely because it gives that more of like a backyard private track type feel, which I really, really like. And not to mention as well, I think it looks absolutely stunning especially with the uh, the reshade settings i run so that is really oh get over that that is all i've really got for this video is just to run a few laps on this really enjoyable track show something off to you guys that i'm not sure many of you would have known about previously and uh hopefully give rubs a little bit of a <laughs> an ego boost as well just to maybe push him to finish some projects that he's probably working on that man seems to always have track projects on the go that never get uh, finished or released but he's a man of quality rather than quantity which and it always seems like every track that he does release i i do enjoy um his enduro track the enduro de hevelinberg is one of my favorite trail tracks and he's done i think he's done round one of this 2020 supercross season as well and i don't know if he done round three onwards i think it was just round one and two probably realized the, the stresses that it takes to try and pump out a track every week and it's uh definitely not ideal now the race versions of his tracks, not easy on PCs by any means. They are super high detailed. Uh, not to mention, like, I think decals are really, really nice. I'm not sure if it's something that people keep private, but I, I always feel like that's a massive uh, like indicator of quality you know, when it comes to track. I feel like some people just get it absolutely spot on when it comes to the decals and the actual dirt itself and how it looks. And then the other people, it just seems to be like a little bit... What's the word? It's just not very defined, you know, you can't make out what you're riding on such, it all kind of blends into each other. And that really, <clears throat> I think, goes to show an experienced track builder. Get up and over this. I won't lie, I literally pressed record as I hopped in the track. And it's my first time, I think, on the 250 since the updated tyres. I am running the updated tyres right now. And I'm actually having a quite an easy time. I thought this would go a lot worse. I thought it would crash a whole lot more, as I say that. I'm about to go over the bars, save it. Thank you. Um, and I've, yeah, so I've not ridden the 250 since the updated tyres. And it's interesting just to see how much grip we've got. Now, I don't know if this is even a soft soil track, to be completely honest with you. It's probably not. <laughs> it, would, it, would it make much sense for a super track to be soft soil? I have no idea. I'm not a track creator. I'm sure I'll, I'll go and ask him afterwards. I should probably ask all these questions beforehand, but uh, I'm actually. I was, I was lacking a little bit of inspiration for today, to be honest. I've got a video that I, I thought of literally maybe like 20 minutes ago. Um, but I'm actually quite limited in time. I can sit down and swim recording today. And I think that one's going to take me a good maybe two or three hours. So I will save that one for tomorrow. Purely because I think it's quite a, quite a nice idea. I'm not going to spoil it just yet. But I'm sure you'll see it pop up in your, uh, in your sub feed. If you are subbed, <coughs> press the sub button. If you're not, please turn on notifications. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I hate doing all that YouTube stuff. Um, but yeah, I think you'll, you'll see that tomorrow. At the point that you're watching this anyway, it should all be done. And I'm quite excited for that. Something a little bit different. But I wanted something nice and simple, nice and casual for me to do today. Just to play a little bikes, have a little bit of fun. And I won't lie, I've really been missing Supercross. Now, <laughs> we're only four rounds deep into the national season. But I mean, I, I personally feel that I am a better Supercross rider than Nationals rider. There's something about trying to flow through a rhythm section or rip a bolt turn that I find much more enjoyable than trying to work my way through braking bumps and, and such. And that's just, just a personal thing. I, I feel like a majority of people, especially in MX bikes, because we know how uh, wonky Supercross can be. A lot of people do prefer the Nationals. And what I, what I don't mind actually is it's a pro and con, it's a length for the races, because by the end of Moto2, I'm peeling my hands off the handlebars. However, it's very, very nice that you haven't got to get the whole shot to have a good race. You like, you've got time to be able to come back through. Now, most of the races, oh god, save that, thank you. Most of the Supercross races in the 450 class, I was whole shot and I had my start technique down, and beta 17 traction was... <laughs> 
in its uh, purest form, and I just managed to find a way around that. However, now, especially with these updated tyres, 450 starts are actually insane. Uh, I think nobody even uses clutch anymore, I don't think, off the gate. We just wait for the gates to drop and then start accelerating, because if we do if we do use the clutch, we're just going to do a bloody backflip. Uh, I can't speak for the 250s. I have no idea what it's like to say this. Again, this is the first time riding them since that update, but they feel pretty solid. And if this isn't a soft soil track, then the, the actual update tyres, they make the traction worse on tracks that aren't soft soil. So if this is worse traction, it's still pretty nutty. I can still get it cranked over fairly far. Let me take the right-hand side this time. I'm taking the left. So we triple in, triple again, triple again. I can't wait to get comments telling me to get out of third person. It always happens. Oh, no, the Kawasaki front end. There we go. Hit me in the ass. I saw yesterday's video. I saw one person, like, because I, I, I rode a Cowie at the start of the video, and then I jumped out of the server that I was in, hopped on my old trusty Husky to do the race, and I just wasn't gelling with the 450 Cowie whatsoever. I, I had completely stock set up on it, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But I just found the front end was awful. I, it, it wouldn't turn when I wanted it to turn, and then if I did try and put on that brake saddle a little bit harder, or lean that little bit further over to try and make it go around the corner, I'd just wash the front. and I, for the most part, it's probably a skill issue. It's probably on me, and I'm just used to my my husky and the way of riding that. But I was I was down bad. I was down horrendous. I think I cut most of most of it out because it just wasn't interesting seeing me crashing all the time. Uh, but yeah, I'm very glad I, I switched away from that from the race. But yes, yeah, so one guy was very uh, very upset that I abandoned the KX like that. I, I know people also always have their favourites, and I know it's quite heavily uh, quite heavily influenced by what you ride IRL as well. Now I don't ride a Husky 450, but I cannot get along with the Yamahas in this game, which is a bit of a shame, especially the Yamaha 250. It just feels like it's slacking a little bit for me. And, oh yeah, that, that was a little bit slippery. Hmm. Maybe in third person I lean over further than I do in first, because I haven't got that sense of how tilted the bike is. I suppose if I look at the bike and not the rider, it, it does get pretty, pretty far cranked over. Let me try a bit of, let's try a little bit of chest cam. I don't give chest cam enough love. I feel like there's some people who absolutely love the chess cam on this game. Well, one thing that I cannot get behind, though, is you weirdos that use locked to bike in chess cam. I, it feels so horrible. I can't see where I'm going. I'm not even going to entertain the idea for this video. Uh, you guys that know... Actually, I think it's more of an OG thing, because I don't. I think locked to bike was the normal back when the game kind of first released, so people didn't actually have a choice. Kind of the same with on MX Simulator, for example. Not so much nowadays, because a lot of the old, old players have left the scene. Um, but I think the max dab speed was 20, and it goes all the way up to 60 now. But I remember when I was first picking up the game, a lot of the top, top guys that had been around for years ran 20 dab speed, even on Nationals. And I was like, how on earth are you getting around this track with, with your leg on the bike constantly and not sliding now? I always found it very, very impressive. And then I found out the reasoning why, and it's it's one of the things. I suppose if you learn the game on something and you're used to it, it's just kind of how you stick to things. I remember when I learned the game without using my rider left and right lean, I just used to use forward and back only. So, oh, let me do this. So I used to use forward and back. I would never use left and right this way. And only reason being is I played Sim before this, and Sim doesn't even doesn't have that functionality to kind of lean your body weight left and right. We only have forwards and back. Uh, and it was just, it just made the transition over a little bit easier for me. And for, it was fine for the most part. So through beta 16, it was no issue at all because we had so much traction in beta 16, like more than you know what to do with. You didn't need to worry about weight in the inside or outside peg, depending on what sort of corner it is, or like if you're going over bumps and stuff, or the back end kicks out. You, you could get away with it just from the steering and the leaning forwards and back. Not the case now. And I can't remember exactly when I switched. It was prior to beta 17. But my god, I'm happy that I did. I went through a period of a couple of weeks where I was down horrendous. Down really, really, really bad. But I'm glad I persisted with it and changed it. And uh, you can teach an old dog new tricks, that's for sure. And uh, luckily, I hadn't been playing bikes for years and years and years and years on those settings. It had literally been maybe a year, maybe less than a year at that point. But very thankful that I changed that. I will, uh, will not be going back to them ways. Especially now, especially when we had less traction and waiting the outside peg a little bit was almost like a necessity to get around the corner, especially on these really powerful 450s. Not so bad on the 250s, you can get away with it for the most part, but um, I would highly recommend, if you actually don't use the ride lean too much, or maybe you've got your controls mapped to one stick, just give two stick a go. Um, because I, I personally find, so how, how it is with one stick is a lot of people map it, so they, they say they're turning left on their left analog stick. They also have it so the game automatically leans right at the same time to kind of wait the outside peg. I quite often find that I don't want to be waiting the outside peg in every single corner. 
uh, a lot of the time, let's say you've started slide now, if you actually lean into the slide, a lot of the time it, it stops here and doesn't slide even further, or you don't always want to be leaning the opposite way in the air, because just with general bike control. Uh, I would highly recommend two stick on, on every game. I say that as I've actually been playing one stick on Legends because <laughs> the game's just wonky. And I, no, I'm not going back. Stop telling me to go testing it again. It had its chance. I gave it its chance. I dedicated like six hours to that game. Six hours I'll never get back. I don't want to play it again. <laughs> oh, God. And just, just give it a go, man. Honestly. You know, I think you'll definitely... It will definitely help. Uh, one thing that... I feel like I say one thing and it's quite a bit contradictive because I'm saying try and give yourself as much options and ability as possible. Yeah, I'm sitting here using like brake help, so less chance of my tyres locking up, for example. I should probably t turn that off. I, I definitely have the ability to do so because I've done... Oh my lord! I've, I've done the occasional like hard enduro, like extreme enduro, where they turn all those settings off in the options, where you have to like manually change gear, like let off the roll, hold the clutch, change gear, let it off again, and all that good stuff, and I actually quite enjoy it. I don't know if it's just because it's an enduro setting rather than a race, and I've got a lot more a lot more time, I'm not feeling like rushed or pressured at all, but there's ways around everything. Uh, even with the auto clutch that I have now, some people that don't use it are of the opinion that obviously auto clutch I think takes a little bit longer than doing it manually, because that little pause in between getting off the, the gas, change gear, and getting on the gas again, it's a little bit longer than if you were to do it yourself. And I, I, I kind of find my own ways around that. So if I shifting down, obviously it's, it's no issue at all. But shifting up, a lot of time I won't shift up unless I'm in the air, or maybe I've hit a little little bump that I'm in the air long enough to change gear. And there's there's always little ways around things like that. Just just to get the most out of it, get the most out of your speed. And a lot of it comes as well with uh, kind of like muscle memory, depending on what track it is. You know where you want to be changing gear, what gear you want to be in at what point, and you can kind of you can kind of preemptively sort yourself out before you get there. Kind of, there's a few sections on this track. I, sh I probably should have hopped on a 450. I, I couldn't remember just how big the lines were. It's been, let's say, like a month or two since I played this track last. I feel like there's a few lines on here that would be pretty insane to hit, like quads in rhythm sections and stuff. And I'm actually running, I think, one ear road right now. And you can see from the, the deformation, it's not obscene by any means. And I know that Rube's kind of more than anyone, really, is someone that's experimented with uh, different deformation stuff a lot and to the extent where he's even questioned Proboso on a few things and how the road exactly works and is it working as it should do. Um, something else I think has been working on for Beta 18 is how the, the road kind of changes between uh, like soil types. So say if you've got a, a one type of soil on top and then a, a, maybe a harder base, the road kind of changes depending on that. All very, very complex stuff that I am far too stupid to even understand, so I'm not even going to try to. Uh, but I think he does a really, really good job on his uh, road. Um, a very good, very good example of this actually is his Southwick track, and I think that's got some of the best road in the game. If you just hop on there and solo and play, it actually develops good ruts, like really, really good ruts. Something that I'm, I'm guessing there's just like a magic formula, a magic settings and thickness of materials and such that you have to do. And I'm not sure if that is massively divulged information but he, there's something about his tracks that he just seems to get it right so th this track for example i know it's super cross for, for the most part it looks like it's meant to be slightly on the hard pack side and whilst you can see the deformation it's not it's not mad it's not crazy it's not kicking me all over the place it's just it's just there and i imagine if i was to sit here and spin maybe another 20 laps or so then yeah at some point i would definitely recognize it in the corners maybe it'd grab me a little bit but for right now early doors you kind of get what you expect. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect. Let's, let's say Tomac has a, an open track to himself. I wouldn't expect him to go out on the track and then within five laps or so the track be absolutely destroyed. You know, it doesn't doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Although I have done 15 laps already. Have I really been? <laughs> I've just been putting in like a moto without even realising it. Bloody hell! <laughs> I'm 14 minutes into this recording. How's this happened? That's what I mean. When you get a nice, nice, fun, enjoyable track that you haven't got to think about too much, time just flies by, which is uh, a good and a bad thing. <laughs> I can only relate it to. Oh, you're going to oh, be feel like such a nerd now. I relate it to like Minecraft, for example. If you start like a new Minecraft world, and before you know it, you've just wasted five hours straight <laughs> just digging away in a tunnel, and you're like, well, where'd that time go then? <laughs> I didn't realise I was on it for so long. But no, that's, I think that is a true testament of a really enjoyable track. And I, I want to say it's actually, it's quite easy. You know, I, I don't think I've had much grief. I think the only grief I've been having as I, 
How many times can this happen to me? Like, <laughs> every single time I say something about riding well or having no issue, I always bloody crash. It's just, I've just jinxed myself every time. Um, oh shit, what was I saying now? Yeah, I've not had much grief. I think it's just a fairly straightforward, easy track. And if you are someone who is not in the position to have a extremely OP PC, then download the race version. Not, not the... <laughs> other way around don't download the race version download this version i'll put both links in the description so i have this one which is the forest edition i both so i both so thank you and you want to implement bloody reset delay timers <coughs> you didn't hear that from me uh, <laughs> download this version if you haven't got a really beefy pc if you want to go and see what the uh, race version is like by all means go and do so it looks absolutely incredible he's done a very very good job on it i wanted to release some more Again, I'm hoping that we can stroke his ego enough, leave some very not very nice comments about the track as well. Maybe he'll be motivated to finish something else. Quite a uh, quite an influential man in the community, I think. Helps lots and lots of people, and yeah, has made his own few masterpieces in the meantime. But yeah, thank you very much. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video as always. Uh, drop a like if you're new to no, not if you're new to the channel. I mean, yes, if you're new to the channel, do it all. Drop a like anyway, whoever you are. Do it right now. Press that like button. Three, two, one. Thank you. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. <laughs> Have a lovely rest of the day, whatever you're up to, and until I catch you in the next video, peace. I'm working hard, I'm sacrificing my life, I'm sacrificing my mind, I'm sacrificing my sanity, but most importantly, I'm sacrificing my time. Boy, I feel fine, I feel like I am a king. Honestly, I can't complain, even with faith that's the size of a grain of some salt, I will still.